105 billion rubles. So much Russia spent every day in April. That, for example, is the annual budget of the whole Tula region. According to that logic, the revenues of Moscow are also very high, yeah? No, Russian economy is just not about logic at all. The budget of the Federation received much less than spends. As a result, the deficit in April reached the planned deficit for the year. In such a situation, it would be logical to end the war against Ukraine and shorten the main expenses. But instead, the Kremlin has decided to take up the good old extortion. In the parliament, they want to introduce a tax for super profits of the past years. This literally undermines one of the main tenses of the law – retroactivity. Moreover, even Russian economists do not know what the authorities will decide to call super profits. Since the transition from the USSR to Russia, or an independent state, officials have always looked for and found a way, under what slogan to withdraw, as it seemed to them the so-called super profits. But what will they call super profits? The bandits of the 90s in general acted in the same way. If you think that they just came and took the money, it wasn't like that. They always justified their actions. Moscow is also desperately looking for money because the regime's main financial source, oil and gas revenues, has disappeared. In generally April they decreased by 52% in annual terms. Before the full-scale war against Ukraine, the oil and gas sector, according to experts, held almost two-thirds of the entire Russian economy. Such a sharp decrease in revenues is primarily the result of Western sanctions. The second reason is corruption. The lower the price, the more profitable it is for them, because they pay taxes on this price. And then this oil is already bought by intermediaries. And very often intermediaries are foreign officers that are associated with the oil companies themselves or with Russian corrupt officials. Another indicator of the Russian economy's decline is the total lack of transparency and chasing figures. For example, the authorities officially declare a record low poverty rate of less than 10%. But according to economists, in fact, this figure is twice as much. The cherished result is achieved just by changing the poverty calculation method. Why? Just because of Putin. He said that by 2030 the poverty level will be at 6.5%. So the authorities are reducing the number of the poor as they can. Similar situation with unemployment. Officially, it is at a historical low, 3.3%. But this is not because there are more work, but because there are fewer people. Since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, up to a million and two hundred thousand citizens have left Russia, others abroad or, I beg my pardon, in the grave, after mobilization. These are mostly young people, so there is an anonymous situation in the labor market. Only 15% of workers are under 30 years of age, another 15% are between 30 and 35. Why did the number of unemployed, I emphasize the legal unemployed registered ones, decreased so sharply in the Russian Federation? First of all, a lot of people left. The people who formed the basis of the able-bodied population. Secondly, already today there is a severe shortage of a certain category of personnel in the Russian Federation. First of all, we are talking about production specialities, about engineering and technical workers. And finally, 10. So many percent of Russians can afford mortgages. The reason are the fall in incomes and the crisis in the real estate market. At the same time, existing mortgages are dangerous for the banking system because two-thirds are preferential, which means unsustainable. And at some point, the poorest people might just stop paying. All this creates serious strategic risks for the Russian economy. There is a process in Russia when flats are built but not sold. The percentage of apartments sold is now many times less than it was before the start of the war. On the one hand, this is the first factor. The second factor is the fall in the value of real estate, which is observed primarily in Moscow. Moscow is the flagship market. Therefore, the situation really creates certain risks of a sharp slowdown in the economy. Yes, the Russian economy did not collapse in the first month of the full-scale war against Ukraine. But what's been happening here all this time is an attempt to delay the inevitable collapse at the cost of the well-being of future generations. Danilo Kobza, UATV.